So, you know, one and a half bad decisions so far. So it's around lunchtime, but I don't really see anything that I want to eat uh, in here. So thinking if I should order, but then I feel bad because there's a typhoon going on. So, huh, should I go out? Okay, so I decided that I'm gonna go and chance it and go out for lunch. Um, the rain seems to be off and on, so we'll see how long it holds up for. Um, but yeah, I thought I could maybe kill two birds with one stone because there's something else that I wanted to do for quite a while now. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. And that is taking my coins to the ATM. So Japan is a very cash-based society still yet today. Um, so what happens is that every time you come home, you have like a handful of coins. And I don't do it, which is which I should, but I know a lot of people will carry coin purses just to manage their coins. I come home and I put it into this bowl and it's accumulated and I want to get rid of it. So I know that the ATMs in Japan, you can make transactions in either paper money or coins. You just put it into this slot and it will count it for you and deposit it into your account. I am hoping I can go and get that done. If I can't, it's gonna be a little awkward because I'm gonna be carrying around a bunch of coins. So maybe I'm not gonna take all of it this time, but uh, yeah, we'll take some and test it out. If it doesn't work, then I'm gonna be going to lunch with like a bag of coins. You know how sometimes you make a decision and then like right when you start to do it, you immediately regret it? It's right now, right now. Okay. Okay, so that didn't really go as well as planned. Apparently you can only put in a hundred coins at a time. And then after it's done, it takes like a really long time to process and count the coins. So it was using up the machine. Um, and then I went to the next machine and I used that, did the same. So um, I actually didn't get to uh, deposit all of it. I got like half the bag still, um, but it was pretty good. Um, so the amount that I got from like half that bag was uh, 6,877 yen, which is like, what, almost $65 US. So not bad, um, but I did feel bad because there's people that came to the ATM uh, next to me after I used it and like couldn't use it because it was still processing the, the coins. Um, so you know, one and a half bad decisions so far. I'm gonna go in for lunch. Hopefully it is a good decision. Let's go. Katsu seems like a good decision, right? Okay, so back home, safe and sound, made it back alive. Um, you know, typhoons are super common in Japan. Like you'll get used to it if you live here for a while. Uh, it's not just earthquakes and tsunamis, it's also the typhoons. Um, speaking of earthquakes, there was one a couple of days ago. It's like a 6.1 or 6.4. It was the first one in like a really long time. So I was on a Zoom meeting and then everybody's like, oh, Jishin, 
And then, you know, Jishin means earthquake. And so we're all like, oh, wow, this is really long. But anyways, yeah, we get used to that too. Um, so every year, like around this time, it might be a little bit early this season, but uh, typhoons will come through like Okinawa, Kyushu usually. And then some of them will like swipe up Honshu and Tokyo or they'll like veer off to Korea or something. Um, at least one or two per year, um, sometimes maybe even three or four, especially down in Kyushu where I used to live. Um, but yeah, you get used to it. Um, luckily in Tokyo, there are no like major problems. I know um, in more countryside areas, there's a lot of landslides that happen, flooding, and it's like really terrible. But luckily in Tokyo, it's, you know, pretty good. Um, the power has never gone out ever in the time that on all the years that I've lived here, the power has never gone out once. So yeah, that my lunch is good. And I've actually started a new Instagram just like a couple of days ago. So it, if you follow me on Instagram on my main account, you'll notice that I don't really post food pics. Um, it, I just felt like it doesn't really go with what I usually post and posting a food dish would be like, what, you know? So I only post the stories, but when I do post them to stories, I'll get a lot of DMs and reactions. And so it might be good to just start a second account. Um, that way people can, you know, save a post uh, for later if they want to, um, you know, make a list on places they want to try to eat at if they're going to take a trip to the area. So I started this new account called Bites and Grinds. Um, it is purely just food posts. Uh, so far, I've only posted a few and I have like two followers. Hopefully that increases by another two. Um, but yeah, it's basically a casual account. It's not like a photography account or anything like that. It's just casual pictures of places that I've eaten and thought were pretty decent and felt like sharing with you guys. So yeah, check that out if you're interested. But when I was looking through my old pictures for food pics, just to kind of prepare to make this account. It got me thinking, um, unfortunately, that, you know, I really regret not trying harder to take pictures of my food. I know that's kind of silly, but, you know, so when we go out to eat, a lot of us will take pictures of the food, but it's, it's like, you know, just kind of like snapshots, right? Like you think, oh, you know, it'll jog my memory if I want to recall it sometime later, or I will share it with my friend or like my family. And that's how I was doing it before. And um, part of the reason was probably because it was a little embarrassing to spend so much time taking pictures of my food. I always thought like, are people looking at me? Or, um, you know, if I'm with friends or family, like am I holding them up? And now when I look back, I never thought that I'd be wanting to have the option of sharing it 10 years later on a platform called Instagram and creating a second account for food. And so what I'm trying to say is that you don't really know what you're going to be using your photos and videos for in the future. And even though you might not think you will ever want to share it in the open or you know print it out in a book or you know whatever it is you just don't know realistically um so i just wish that i spent a little bit more time and effort and you know intentionally took those pictures i'm not saying like that i or anybody needs to get up on the chair and do one of those top down shots i actually don't think that's very um good manners <laughs> in, in, unless you're in a professional shoot if you're gonna spend the time to whip out your phone and take a shot i mean just do it intentionally but yeah uh i kind of want to make some coffee so i'm gonna go make some coffee uh and then get some work done yeah let's go So today I'm making a latte. Usually I'll just stick with a black coffee. Um, I like it dark, strong, but I 
think I've been subconsciously influenced at least um, in the past few weeks because I've been drinking a lot more lattes um, and I thought about it. Some of the uh, YouTubers that I'll tune into every now and then are a bit younger like um, Elliot Choi, Kelly Wakasa, um, Jed Cal, Joma. Um, you know, they're, they're younger and I feel like they just drink a lot of lattes in their videos and maybe that made me want to drink more lattes subconsciously or something like that. Yeah, I just got to get some things done um, for the job that pays the bills. It's not YouTube, um, by the way. Um, I wouldn't mind if it was, but um, I do have my job to tend to, so I have to get some things out. Um, and then I actually have a few TikTok videos on my to-do list, so I'm gonna get to that in a sec. Okay, so I'm done with that. I am going to start on my TikTok videos now. Um, if you don't know, I do have an account, so you can check it out there. I don't sing or dance or anything like that. It's really not my thing. And plus the platform is a lot wider now as far as what types of content are on there. But um, it's a platform that a lot of people pay attention to and use. I mean, like the quickest ever to get to a billion users, which is insane. But anyways, I know that making videos specifically for TikTok can be pretty tedious, especially um, if you're like me and also taking pictures and making YouTube videos and writing blogs. Um, it's kind of not feasible to do everything plus have a main full-time job um, and you know maintain some kind of social life um, just as one person. So what I understand and have been trying to do is basically the uh, reverse content pyramid where you start off by creating the biggest um, or most heavy piece of content first. So it could be the podcast or the long form blog or YouTube video in my case. And then just kind of like taking things from there and making smaller bits of content. Um, that's what I've been trying to do. I've done it for like a few TikTok videos so far. Um, so I'm just gonna take the videos that I took for the YouTube video and clip some of them and kind of rearrange it and then re-record myself talking about it, but in a more concise um, way. So I do have my text ready and I just record that and then I just put everything into Adobe Premiere Pro and edit the video. Uh, it doesn't take super long, especially compared to these YouTube videos. And then I export it and post it on TikTok. So yeah, um, that's pretty much my day and how I spent it um, as the typhoon is raging outside. Uh, thank you again for hanging out with me. Um, let me know if you like these kind of videos where I'm just kind of like not making a video around a specific topic or anything, just kind of like going through the day and talking about things that pop up in my head and show you a few things I'm working on or doing. Yeah, if you um, made it here, thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope to see you in the next one and until then, take care.